Hello, I'm Mr. McBrien. This is SCH3U, Balanced Equations and Ratios. The Ontario curriculum has as a learning goal that students will be able to explain the quantitative relationships expressed in a balanced chemical equation using appropriate units of measure, i.e. grams. Also, students will calculate the corresponding mass or quantity in moles or molecules for any given reactant or product in a balanced chemical equation. So our objectives today. We're going to learn how to use a balanced equation to calculate the amount of reagents needed or the amount of product that will be produced in a given reaction. And we'll establish how to use the question for a given um, equation to determine the stoichiometric term that we'll use. And that'll become clear soon, what I mean by that. Okay, so when we're talking balanced equations, products and reactants and amounts, what we're talking about is stoichiometry. What does stoichiometry mean? Well, it's useful to take a step backwards and talk about communication. Human beings measure and communicate amounts of compounds in terms, generally, of mass. This is inconsistent with the way that compounds communicate with each other. That is, how they react. They react with each other in terms of number of moles. And so what this means is that before we relate an amount of compounds to amount of of another compound, we have to translate the amounts into moles. So let's illustrate this with an example. So the Haber process is ex extremely famous, one of the most important processes in chemistry. Essentially, it's a way to fix nitrogen, to pull it out of the air and to make it available for various reactions the most notable being for fertilizer. So the Haber process um, is a reaction in gaseous form where nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. Now, we might ask ourselves, how many moles of hydrogen gas do we need to get a mole of, to, to react? A mole of nitrogen. And since this is a balanced equation, it's pretty easy actually to figure that out. We um, need three moles of hydrogen for every mole of nitrogen. Straight out of our, our equation, we can pull it out of the, the terms in front of the uh, in front of the given compounds. And most of you probably could uh, pull that uh, information out just by examination. Okay, so a similar one. How many moles of ammonia, NH3, do we get per mole of hydrogen gas? And this example is no different. We get two moles of ammonia for every three moles of hydrogen. And we can simplify that if we want to, to point six, seven moles of ammonia per mole of hydrogen. It's worthwhile having a look at another important reaction. So the Apollo landers, they use hydrazine fuel um, in order to go down, up and down from the moon. Um, and the balanced equation is given here. So, how many moles of hydrazine do we need per mole of dinitrogen tetroxide? Okay, pretty straightforward again. We can pull it straight out of the terms here and see that it's two moles of hydrazine per mole of nitrogen tetroxide. Uh, how many moles of nitrogen do we get for each mole of hydrazine? Well, we do the exact same thing. 3 moles of nitrogen for every 2 moles of hydrazine. And we can simplify that 
to put a 1 at the bottom by simply dividing by 2, and we get 1.5 moles of nitro nitrogen for every mole of hydrazine. Pretty simple. Okay, but we're talking about moles there. Um, and what we, what we typically get and are asked to report is grams. But the good news is we're experts in converting to and from masses. So let's talk about the three kinds of calculations we might need to do. I have 4.26 grams of reactant A and 7 grams of reactant B. How much product will I get? Another question we might be asked. You need 8 grams of product. How much of each of reactants A and B do you need in order to, to get that 8 grams? And you have 6.34 grams of reactant A. How many grams of reactant B do you need in order to react all of that? So there are three different questions, but all of them are extremely similar. Okay, so uh, it might be useful to have a little bit of a graphical visualization of how we can make this calculation. So, for the first question, how much product will you get, starting with the mass of reactants? We need to convert the mass of reactants to moles of reactants. We apply the stoichiometry term, once we have the number of moles of reactants, to find the number of moles of product. And then to report the number of grams of product, we need to convert back using our familiar equation to get mass products. Very straightforward three-step three, three step process gives us our mass of products from our mass of reactants. Exact same kind of process from the idea of uh, given a mass of product that you need, how many reactants, how, much, how many grams of reactants do you put in? So the first thing to do is take your mass of product and convert it to moles of product. Again, apply the stoichiometry term to find the number of moles of each reactant you need. And then from there, using that number of moles, we can, um, using the molar mass, convert that to mass of reactants. Okay. Um, and the third question. How much... Um, how much reactant B do you need given a mass of reactant A? Again, calculate the number of moles of reactant A, apply the stoichiometry term to calculate the moles of reactant B, use the molar mass of reactant B to calculate the mass of reactant B that you need to measure out. Okay, so all those are extremely similar. Let's try it out on an example. So back to the Haber process. How many grams of hydrogen gas do we need if we have one gram of nitrogen to react? Well, again, we can pull out our stoichiometry term. We know that we need three moles of hydrogen for every one mole of nitrogen. Notice that the one is implied here in front of nitrogen, of course. So knowing that, we can take our one gram of nitrogen that we started with, use the molar mass of nitrogen, 28 grams per mole, to find the number of moles of nitrogen. Next, we calculate the number of moles of hy hydrogen by applying our stoichiometry term. We have 0 0.0357 moles of nitrogen times 3 moles of hydrogen per mole of nitrogen. And notice something interesting here. By writing the term the way we did, moles of nitrogen cancels. So the moles of nitrogen is on the top here and on the bottom here, meaning it cancels, and we're left with moles of hydrogen which is exactly what we want. 
So our answer is 0 0.107 moles of hydrogen. Finally, we need to find the number of grams of hydrogen gas. That's what we were asked for. So we multiply the molar mass of hydrogen times the number of moles gives us 0.216 grams of hydrogen for every one gram of nitrogen. Okay, um, let's try another example around the Haber process. We at, react one gram of nitrogen with enough hydrogen is implied. How many grams of ammonia do we get? Okay, so the exact same kind of thing. First off, we have to convert one gram of nitrogen to, um, uh, sorry, let's first extract our stoichiometry term. We get two moles of ammonia for every one mole of nitrogen. Now we can take one gram of nitrogen again and do the same thing we did last time, convert it into the number of moles of nitrogen. Then we find the moles of ammonia by applying our stoichiometry term. And notice again, moles of nitrogen cancels here to give us moles of ammonia. And finally, we convert to grams of ammonia by just multiplying by the uh, molar mass of, ammo of ammonia times the number of moles gives us the number of grams. Therefore, if we react one gram of nitrogen, we get 1.22 grams of ammonia. So for our final example, let's use rocket fuel again. We react hydrazine with nitrogen tetroxide to get ammonia and water. How many grams of hydrazine do we need per gram of dinitrogen tetroxide? Stoichiometry term, two moles of hydrazine for every one mole of nitrogen tetroxide. We calculate the number of moles of dinitrogen tetroxide. Again, just dividing by the molar mass gives us 0 0.0109 moles. And then simply applying the stoichiometry term gives us the number of moles of hydrazine. Then multiplying by the molar mass of hydrazine gives us the number of grams of hydrazine that we that we need and which was in fact the question so we need 0.696 grams of hydrazine for every gram of dinitrogen tetroxide so let's talk for a few seconds about effectively getting our stoichiometry term. It's really rather easy to get the stoichiometry term correct if you follow a couple of quick hints. Many students when they first start doing reactions um, invert the stoichiometry term or choose the wrong numbers from the equation but it's really not very difficult to get it correct. So a few tips. First off, always make sure your equation's balanced before you start work. Next, what you want to do is determine the components in the equation that are of interest. You want to determine the item that you know, that is the thing they gave you the mass of, and you want to determine the thing they're asking for, the component from the equation that they're asking for. Once you know that, then you can start to build your stoichiometry term. Write, this, write the term with the thing that you want to find on the top and the component that you're given on the bottom. And of course, remember to put the numbers in from the balanced equation. Now, when you do this and you retain the uh, descriptor, for example, uh, three moles of hydrazine, um, you can then cancel the units and make sure that you don't have the stoichiometry term upside down. If you leave the units out, 
then what you'll find is it's very easy to put the term upside down and wind up with the wrong amount of the material. So here's an example. We burn three grams of this compound. How much carbon dioxide will we get? So here's our balanced equation. So we've been given the hydrocarbon C12H24O2. We need carbon dioxide. So we put the thing that we need on the top, the carbon dioxide, and extract the 12 term and put it with the carbon dioxide term. So 12 moles of carbon dioxide for every one mole of C12H24O2. And if we build our stoichiometry term like this, when we put it into our expression, the, uh, the terms will cancel and make sure that we don't have it upside down. So a few final tips. Remember, always make sure that the equation's balanced. If it's not, you need to balance it before you, um, before you calculate your reactants and products. Remember that stoichiometry only applies in the molar domain. You can't relate masses to masses directly, only moles to moles. And you've got to resist the temptation to try applying your molar ratios, your stoichiometry term, to masses. Only bad things happen when you try to do that. And finally, one more note, don't limit your significant figures with your stoichiometry coefficients. Those coefficients are um, essentially precise terms. They have unlimited uh, significant figures. You need to only concentrate on your masses uh, with regards to significant figures. Okay, so please work your way through the worksheet. And um, once you're finished that, you can come back and we'll talk about the homework. Welcome back. For your homework, please read through textbook section 7.1 and do the following questions. We'll return to those tomorrow. So today, we had our introduction to stoichiometry, comparing uh, components from an equation quantitatively in the molar domain, extracting the stoichiometry term, and determining how much starting materials we, we need and how much product we'll produce. Thanks for listening.